In this video, we're going to be looking at the design of the voltmeter, a device that we can use to measure the voltage, or potential difference, across a component in a circuit. In a circuit diagram, we can represent a voltmeter with an uppercase V inside a circle. And in this circuit, the voltmeter is being used to measure the voltage drop across this resistor. In this video, we'll see how we can construct a voltmeter by using a galvanometer and a resistor connected in series. We'll also see how we can calculate the required resistance of this resistor in order to build a voltmeter capable of measuring a given maximum voltage. So, to start off with, let's consider a cell, and let's say that this cell has a certain voltage, V, that we want to measure. A simple way that we can try to do this is to connect a galvanometer in series with the cell. Let's quickly recall that a galvanometer is a device which can measure the magnitude and direction of a current using a needle on a dial. So in this circuit, because the cell is applying a voltage to the galvanometer, this produces a current, which we can call I. This causes the needle on the galvanometer to deflect, and as long as the current isn't too big, the deflection will be proportional to the current. Now Ohm's law tells us that the voltage applied to a conductor is equal to the current in that conductor multiplied by the resistance of that conductor. In other words, the voltage across our galvanometer, which is the same as the voltage supplied by the cell, is equal to the current in our galvanometer multiplied by the resistance of the galvanometer, which we can call Rg. So, if we know the resistance of the galvanometer, and the galvanometer tells us the current in the circuit, then we can work out the voltage of the cell simply by multiplying these two numbers together. So, in this simple case, it looks like a galvanometer can function as a voltmeter. The deflection of the needle is proportional to the current in the circuit, and Ohm's law tells us that the current in the circuit is proportional to the voltage. Therefore, the deflection of the needle is proportional to the voltage. However, there is a problem with just using a galvanometer as a voltmeter. This is down to the fact that galvanometers are really sensitive, and typically they can only measure up to a maximum current in the microamp or milliamp region. So for example, we might find that the needle on our galvanometer reaches maximum deflection for a current of 100 microamps in either direction. And this means that any current over 100 microamps will also just cause maximum deflection of the needle. What this means is that we can use a galvanometer as a voltmeter, but it would only be capable of measuring voltages within a very limited range. If the galvanometer has a maximum deflection current of Ig, then it means it will reach maximum deflection for a voltage equal to Ig times Rg. So this expression basically tells us the voltage range of our galvanometer. If we want to increase the range of voltages that we can measure, then we need some way of limiting the current in this circuit to prevent the galvanometer's needle from reaching maximum deflection. Fortunately, there's a pretty simple solution. All we need to do is connect a resistor in series with the galvanometer. The function of this resistor is that it increases the overall resistance in the circuit, thus decreasing the current in the galvanometer. This means that, together, these two components can be connected to a larger potential difference without the needle on the galvanometer reaching maximum deflection. And this is actually all we need to build a voltmeter just a galvanometer and a resistor connected in series. In the context of voltmeter design, the extra resistor which we've attached here is known as a multiplier resistor, and we can say it has a resistance Rn. The reason it's called a multiplier resistor is that it effectively multiplies the maximum voltage that the galvanometer could measure on its own. We can see how this works by applying Ohm's law to our voltmeter as a whole. Ohm's law tells us that the voltage across the voltmeter, which once again is the same as the voltage supplied by the cell, is equal to the current in the voltmeter multiplied by the total resistance of the voltmeter. This means that the full deflection voltage of our voltmeter, in other words, the range of our voltmeter, is given by the full deflection current of the galvanometer multiplied by the resistance of the voltmeter. Here it's useful to remember that for resistors connected in series, the total resistance is given by the sum of the individual resistances. This means that the total resistance of our voltmeter is equal to the resistance of the multiplier resistor plus the resistance of the galvanometer. In other words, Rv equals Rm plus Rg. So overall we can write V equals Ig times Rm plus Rg. This is a really useful formula that tells us the voltage range that our voltmeter can measure based on the full deflection current of the galvanometer, the resistance of the multiplier resistor, and the resistance of the galvanometer. We can get another useful formula if we rearrange this expression to make Rm the subject. To do this, we start by multiplying out the brackets on the right-hand side of the expression to give us V equals Ig Rm plus Ig Rg. We can then subtract Ig times Rg from both sides of the equation, and then finally dividing both sides of the equation by Ig. Finally, we'll just swap around the left and right sides of this expression 
to give us Rm equals V over Ig minus Rg. This expression tells us the size of multiplier resistor that we need to use in order to build a voltmeter with a range of V using a galvanometer with a resistance Rg and a full deflection current Ig. Now one other important thing to mention is that when we make a voltmeter by connecting together a resistor and a galvanometer, we need to make a couple of modifications to the galvanometer. The first issue we need to address is that galvanometers can measure current in either direction. This means that generally they have a zero in the middle of the dial, and the needle will deflect either to the right with the current flowing one way, or to the left when the current is reversed. Now if we're building a direct current, or DC voltmeter, that means we only want it to measure a potential difference in one direction. This means that we can get rid of half of the scale as we're only interested in this bit, which indicates a current with a certain direction. Now the other issue we need to address with our galvanometer is that, at the moment, it measures current. However, we've shown in this equation that if our galvanometer has a maximum deflection current Ig, then the voltmeter that we build using this galvanometer will have a maximum deflection voltage V. We can use this expression to calculate the value of V that we would write in place of Ig on the galvanometer's dial. For example, if we were using a galvanometer that had a resistance Rg of 100 ohms, and a full deflection current Ig, of 100 microamps, and we were using a multiplier resistor with a resistance equal to 5 kilo ohms, then the range of our voltmeter, V, would be given by 100 times 10 to the negative 6 amps, that's Ig, multiplied by 5000 ohms, that's Rm, plus 100 ohms, that's Rg, which works out at 0.51 volts, which we could then write at the maximum deflection position on the voltmeter's dial. So, once we've chosen the value of our multiplier resistor, connected it in series with a galvanometer, and calibrated the scale, our voltmeter is ready to be used. Of course, measuring the voltage of a cell isn't the only application for a voltmeter. More commonly, we might use a voltmeter to measure the potential drop over individual components in a circuit like this. Here we have a cell and two resistors wired in series. And let's say that these resistors have resistances of R1 and R2 respectively. Now in this circuit, the cell provides a voltage, which we'll call V, and this creates a current, which we'll call I. Now if we were analyzing a circuit that looked like this, it might be useful to measure the voltage that's dropped across each of these resistors. And to measure the voltage drop across R1, for example, we would attach a voltmeter in parallel with R1. And of course we now know that a voltmeter is essentially comprised of a multiplier resistor with a resistance Rm, and a galvanometer with a resistance Rg. Now when we look at a voltmeter in an application like this, we can see that the multiplier resistor actually fulfills another useful function. At this point in the circuit, the incoming current is split into two smaller currents. Let's say that the current flowing through the voltmeter is called IV, and the current going through resistor R1 is called IR. This splitting of the current could potentially cause a problem, as it threatens to decrease the size of the current that flows through the resistor R1. And once again, Ohm's law shows us that if the current decreases, then the voltage will decrease. Meaning that connecting a voltmeter here actually threatens to decrease the voltage we were trying to measure, which obviously isn't what we want from an accurate measuring device. Very fortunately, this problem is actually solved by the presence of the multiplier resistor. This resistor ensures that the overall resistance of the voltmeter is relatively high. This means that only a very small amount of current flows through the voltmeter. So since the current through our voltmeter IV is very small, this means that the current through the resistor IR is approximately equal to the current in the rest of the circuit I. The upshot of this is that connecting a voltmeter in parallel with R1 makes only a negligible change to the current in R1, therefore making a negligible change to the voltage across R1. So, now that we've seen how a voltmeter is designed and used, let's try answering a practice question. The circuit diagram represents a galvanometer connected with a multiplier resistor. The multiplier resistor has a resistance 50 times that of the galvanometer. What is the ratio of the current in the galvanometer Ig to the current in the multiplier resistor Im? So in this question, we've been given a circuit diagram that shows a galvanometer and a resistor called a multiplier resistor connected in series with a cell. Let's start by recalling that the term multiplier resistor describes a resistor used in the construction of a voltmeter. Specifically, it's the name given to a resistor which is connected in series with a galvanometer, as is the case in this circuit. This combination of a multiplier resistor and a galvanometer creates a voltmeter. So effectively, this circuit diagram shows a voltmeter being used to measure the voltage of a cell. Now, it is possible to use a galvanometer on its own to measure a voltage. 
However, galvanometers are so sensitive that they're only able to measure voltages within a very small range. The function of the multiplier resistor in a voltmeter is that it greatly increases, or multiplies, the maximum voltage that the galvanometer can measure. In a voltmeter, we typically find that the resistance of the multiplier resistor, which we can call Rm, is much greater than the resistance of the galvanometer, which we can call Rg. As we can see, the same is true in this question. We're told that the multiplier resistor has a resistance 50 times that of the galvanometer. We're then asked to calculate the ratio of the current in the galvanometer Ig to the current in the multiplier resistor Im. So let's start by writing down an expression for each of these currents in terms of their resistances, which we've been given some information about. We can do this using Ohm's law, which tells us that the current in a conductor is equal to the voltage across that conductor divided by the resistance of that conductor. So we can say that the current in the galvanometer Ig is equal to the voltage across the galvanometer, which we could call Vg, divided by the resistance of the galvanometer, which is Rg. Similarly, we can say that the current in the multiplier resistor Im is equal to the voltage across the multiplier resistor, which we'll call Vm, divided by the resistance of the multiplier resistor Rm. Now, it's really important to note that Vg and Vm are not necessarily the same. It's tempting to assume that each of these voltages is simply the same as the voltage supplied by the cell, which we could call Vc. However, this isn't the case. When we have resistors in series connected to a cell, as we do in this question, then the voltage drops across each component will add up to the total voltage supplied by the cell. Now, the question is asking us to find the ratio of the current in the galvanometer Ig to the current in the multiplier resistor Im. And one way of expressing the ratio of Ig to Im is to calculate Ig over Im, which must be equal to Vg over Rg divided by Vm over Rm. Dividing this fraction by this fraction is the same as multiplying this fraction by the reciprocal of this fraction, which gives us Vg over Rg times Rm over Vm, which is equivalent to Vg Rm over Vm Rg. Now the question tells us that the multiplier resistor has a resistance 50 times that of the galvanometer. In other words, Rm equals 50 Rg. This means that we can substitute 50 Rg in place of Rm in this expression, which then enables us to cancel the common factor of Rg in the numerator and the denominator, leaving us with 50 Vg over Vm. Okay, so this simplifies our expression. However, we still don't have a numerical value for this ratio, and we're not able to calculate the actual values of Vg and Vm without first knowing the voltage supplied by the cell. However, to help us, we can recall that when we have resistors connected in series with a cell, the size of the voltage drop over each resistor is proportional to its resistance. In other words, a bigger resistor will use a bigger proportion of the total available voltage supplied by the cell. Now, because we're told that the resistance of the multiplier resistor is 50 times that of the galvanometer, that means that the voltage drop over the multiplier resistor, Vm, is 50 times the voltage drop over the galvanometer, Vg. Substituting 50 Vg in place of Vm in our expression tells us that the ratio of Ig to Im is 50 Vg over 50 Vg, which is equal to 1. And this is the answer to our question. However, there is a simpler way of answering this question that doesn't require us to use any algebra. In fact, we don't even need to know how a voltmeter is designed. Nor do we need to know anything about the resistances of the galvanometer and the resistor. In fact, it's enough just to see that these two components are connected together in a single series circuit. In a series circuit, the rate of flow of charge, in other words, the current, is the same at every point which means the current in the galvanometer Ig must be the same as the current in the multiplier resistor Im. And if Ig equals Im, then Ig over Im is 1. If we have a multiplier resistor connected in series with the galvanometer, then the ratio of the current in the galvanometer to the current in the multiplier resistor is 1. Let's finish by recapping the key points that we've learned in this video. Firstly, we saw that a voltmeter can be made by connecting a galvanometer in series with a resistor known as a multiplier resistor. The multiplier resistor increases the voltage range of the galvanometer and prevents it from greatly affecting the voltage that's being measured. We've also seen that to build a voltmeter with a voltage range V using a galvanometer with a resistance Rg and a full deflection current Ig, the required resistance Rm of the multiplier resistor is given by this expression. And we can rearrange this expression like this in order to calculate the voltage range of a voltmeter. This is a summary of the design of the voltmeter.